Welcome, everyone. You are listening to the third episode of a show called Overtones on WLXU 93.9 LP FM Lexington. And I am Renee Collins, your host. Each week at this time on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m., this show will bring you, the listening audience, the very best in local musicians, local venues who support those musicians, local organizations that promote music performance and education that this great city of Lexington has to offer the fans of music in the area and beyond. It's a very exciting lineup today as we have three duos. Yes, you heard it right. Three, let's call it dynamic duos. Um, in the studio today, we have the duo Joanna James. We have the duo A Little Bit More. And we have Ray and Whitney. So how about a round of applause for everybody for being here today. <laughs> and also in the studio, we have Mike Mankle from Mike Mankle's Bourbon Barrel Guitars. The opening song, of course, is the new theme song, and we'll be ushering in every episode of Overtones. Brother Smith was singing happy tunes and they are also a winner for best pop band for the 2018 Lexington Music Awards and it was just really wonderful to see them get recognized the other night and that is one of our many topics for the show today the other topic we're going to discuss is this week's Red Barn Live which will feature Narrow Road who are a bluegrass gospel band from Berea, Kentucky. They've uh, performed at Renfro Valley, American Crossroads Radio Show, and countless churches. Um, that's Narrow Road, this Wednesday live on the Red Barn stage at Lexington Arts Place, 8 p.m. Now it's time for Red Barn Recap and to talk about the electrifying performance by Lexington's Magnolia Boulevard. And in the studio today to talk about this, is Mike Mankel from Bourbon Barrel Guitar. And Mike was in the audience with us. Yes, he was. And first of all, packed house, yeah. great audience, oh, yeah. nicest people in the band you will ever meet. Oh, yeah. And a performance by Magnolia Boulevard that blew the roof off Red Barn the other night. Yeah, it did. Kind of like a tornado came through. It was. And Mike, you were in the audience. So my first question for you, what are your thoughts or what were your thoughts as you watched Magnolia Boulevard take the Red Barn stage by storm? I was just proud of my friends. Um, I, I love their music. I, I love the people in the band. Um, I love their hearts. And I love how their hearts translate through their voices and their, their hands and their music. Um, it was a, it made just a really proud moment. I mean, because I'm friends with the Red Barn family. And to have two different sets of friends as part of a family that are on one hand and the other for me was really gratifying actually. Well, it was great seeing you there as well. well. It was fun to be there. It was a great time. So you had a chance encounter with the guitarist earlier that day. I did. I did. And tell us about how one of your bourbon barrel guitars ended up on stage that night in the great care of Greg Irwin. That was pretty cool. Um, I had um, at times brought some guitars in just to have them you know, on stage and had thought about, well, this would be a great chance to um, maybe have the guitars there. Maybe Greg would be interested in playing them. Um, they look great with the barrels anyway. You know, it just kind of adds to the scenery, especially for a radio show that you, you know, you can't hear it, but <laughs> eventually see it. Um, so I had them in my truck, and because uh, I keep them in my truck year round just to um, stress the necks, whether it's hot or cold. Um, I've been accused of basically abusing my own guitars that I build, but I don't abuse them. I test them, and they hold up really well. So anyway, it was a cold morning, and I had three with me, and um, I work at Guitar Center part-time in one of their techs there, and out of the blue, Greg comes in and says, hey, man, how you doing? I says, looking forward to catching you guys tonight at Red Barn. Oh, yeah, you know, it'd be fun. And um, so he did what he wanted to do, and then uh, he said, hey, I really enjoy, you know, seeing your stuff. And I said, well... Uh, I've got a few with me. I said, because um, he had never actually physically seen one. He's just seen pictures of them or played one. And so he had a few minutes. So we went out to my truck, which is kind of like the mobile office, mobile workbench, mobile showroom, you know, and uh, just laid them out on the trunk. And I pulled it, the gate down and just let him, there was three there. I said, you know, pick which one you want. And he kind of looked at me and I said, no, seriously. I said, you know, take one tonight. I'd like to have you play one if you want to. There's no pressure. I wish I would have had a camera to capture that. Well, I actually have a picture of him holding one of them there, okay. which is really cool. Well, I'll share it. it with. I'll share it with you. Um, so he looked at all three of them and just was very humbly. He's, he's such a nice guy, and he's very complimentary. 
and very encouraging, you know, for me. And um, as, a, as a luthier, as a builder, it, it did me. It always does me good when another guitar player actually has a full appreciation of the guitar that I have built, that I, I put in their hands. And I never take it for granted, you know. Um, they're all individual, you know, pieces of crafting. Um, and I have friends of mine, you know, try them out and test them. And so I said, here, you know, would you, which one would you like this? How about this? And I said, okay, just take it home, you know, get used to it if you want to, have it with you tonight. Are you serious? I said, yeah, man. I said, if it was a problem, I wouldn't have offered, you know. And so he did. And um, it was just really cool. It was a little bit of dialogue throughout the day with him. And then we got there, you know, to the show that night and got to see him and went through the sound check and just had him set up. And he played it on, he played the guitar on one of the songs. And um, it, was it was wonderful. Yeah, it was really gratifying. For me, what I love about Greg, um, I mean, he's just a really cool dude. Um, he's very humble. He's an amazing player and musician. And he's a singer, but not with his voice. He, he does sing with his hands he in the six strings. He really guitar. does. And he totally completely has command and control of whatever guitar is in his hand and um, I met him a couple years ago and when I first heard him play I I hear a lot of people play a lot and there's not very many honestly that really um, resonate with my spirit about you know I could just sit and listen to that and I hope I get to hear it again and Greg's one of the few that I've actually met that I can honestly say that about and his, his style is unique and different enough compared to how most people play and he happens to be damn good at it oh, he sure is so um, mike this leads us to a segment of the show we're going to call working in concert and this is going to be a feature that we're going to have probably every two weeks which will talk about how music intersects with business and how they complement one another and the other night mike i was watching people walking into the show actually pre-show and they were just mesmerized and stopped in their tracks when they saw those three guitars on display. <laughs> and there was a lot of questions going on um, from the audience, very curious about the product. Um, they were displayed on the Red Barn stage before and during the concert. So tell us about how you work in concert and how you've combined two of your loves to kind of like work together yeah. for this wonderful, most exceptional product that thank, you make. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm a very blessed person. Um, Every day that I get to wake up, I get to do not just one thing I love, but I have a choice to do things that I love. I either get to build my own guitars, work on my own guitars, work on guitars for friends, work on guitars for strangers, play music, play music with friends, play music with strangers, go hear music of friends, hear music of strangers, and any day could have any combination of that recipe. And so it's, it's so wonderful to be able to have this as part of my life. Um, I read years ago, and it, here's a variety of how the sayings go, but you find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. And, you know, I figure I'm about halfway through uh, mine, um, and I'm looking forward. I've got so many instruments, so many guitars in my head that have been there from, you know, two to 30 years, and um, I just I, I pray that I get the chance to, to build them all. So you say you see these things in your head first, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's a mental creation, and oh, then yeah. it turns into the physical creation. Yeah, I'll be sitting at a, at a traffic light, and I'll see a tree. And uh, I, I can tell just a lot of the maples and walnuts, and I can tell just by the how the, the, the branches and the crotches come together what the figure's like underneath the bark because I can read it. And it's like, <sighs> I'm glad the tree's there. But I'm also um, thankful that there's been trees I've been able to rescue that have been at the end of their life or, you know, there's been trunks. And um, I've got different book matched slabs that are as big as this, you know, desktop here that I've had cut and dried for 20 years. That can be furniture. I've, there's, there's, a, there's hundreds of guitars literally sitting in the wood that I have. And um, I was talking to a fellow this week about which pieces I'm going to actually use for guitars, which pieces I could let go for people that want to build, you know, furniture, benches and tables. And um, I respect that, how the wood is, how God made it, you know, the age of it, the figure in it. And if it's something that really deserves to stay the size that it is and become a table, then it, it will, you know. But uh, there's a lot of there that uh, on the guitar side that they're just dying to be born. And they will be. <laughs> they sure will be. So you have another love of your life that I'd like to talk about. Mm -hmm. And this all kind of 
ties into working in concert mm-hmm. as well because yeah. you literally do work in concert I do. as well. I do. So tell us about your duo. Uh, I happen to have the good fortune and the blessing to be the musical partner of uh, the always lovely Miss Tatiana McGee. And um, she and I met um, in the fall of 2016 and we met over uh, at um, at an open mic and we met over her baby Taylor and my seagull 12 string. And it's it's a beautiful romantic story, and there's not enough time for it today. But it's we, really it's really fun to to work with her. Well, we are going to have you on the show real soon, That'd so we'll hear more about that musical match made in heaven. Thank you. Let's give a mic a round of applause here. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us, Mike. Where can we learn more about your products? Um, I have a website, real simple, bourbonbarrelguitar.com, all singular. And the reason it's uh, all singular and real simple is because when I was thinking about, oh, what should we call this? Um, I knew thematically it'd be a joke about, you know, people drinking way too much and they're plastered and anything else. And, man, they, I saw this cool guitar and it was something about a bourbon barrel. It, it was a guitar from a bourbon barrel. So I, literally, I thought, let's make it simple enough that if you're ripped, you can still remember what it is. So bourbonbarrelguitar.com. And then uh, my shop's here in town, and I'm pretty easy guy to find. And I'm happy to share my guitars and put them in the hands of anybody that wants to play them. Wonderful. So we will be back after these messages.